Zviad Lazishvili, welcome back to the LFA. You're coming off a win over Josh Huber. That was back at LFA 79 by way of a decision in your LFA and U.S. debut. What did you take away from that experience? Um, actually, there was a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of gaps I had in my game, in my striking, and then re a little bit wrestling too. So we tried to work on, on those stuff. And also, I didn't have a fight for over a four year, and that was kind of waking up fight, coming back, and hopefully the next fight could be more interesting and better than the previous one. Well, very good. A lot of athletes, of course, have had to alter their training during the COVID-19 pandemic. What has made this camp different from others in the past for you personally? Um, it was a little bit weird, of course, because gyms were closed and we, we were in the beginning we were training at home. Uh, right. Personal me, I, I, I didn't stop training. I was training, but not, not of course, uh, as we supposed to do. But then slowly, slowly, my, my coach is very, very smart and he managed to adapt to the situation very fast. So we, we've gone back to the trainings normally. And um, for me, it was no problem at all to train. So we, I had a pretty good camp. We tried to uh, see every, every aspect of this uh, next fight and try to turn over every stone and uh, work on the, the details and work on the game plan. So we are pretty well prepared. Very good. Well, no question, your grappling game is world-class. You're a six-time national grappling champion. So it's not shocking. Eight of your 12 wins have come by way of submission, including four wins by way of arm lock. Why have you been so successful with that specific move? Um, I don't know. Uh, um, usually I don't, I don't have this uh, kind of... Uh, uh, favorite move or something whatever it comes during the fight whatever uh, I see I just pull it out and uh, that's it. it comes I don't have like maybe it's like yeah it's like whatever I see whatever the fight gives me that what opportunity I get I just use it and uh, for some reason there was maybe four arm bars and <laughs> came, like, <laughs> yeah so. some guys are giving up their arms uh, maybe your opponent Ricky Steele uh, will try to avoid that but let's talk about him he's also coming into this fight undefeated he's a fourth degree black belt in karate um, Zavia, do you look at this fight as a classic grappler versus striker break down this fight for um, for me, I, if I compare, for example, Ricky to my previous opponent, I believe that my previous opponent was much uh, dangerous than Ricky is. But technical wise, uh, I think Ricky is more hard hard opponent for me uh, because he's like a tall, five foot eleven, and he likes to just uh, tag and run away, tag and run away, and he doesn't like to disengage, and he moves really good. I think his wrestling is pretty decent too, uh, and also physically he's he, he looks stronger than he looks more stronger than he is. So mm -hmm. he's he's I think he's physically he's stronger too. So it will be hard fight. It will be tough fight, I believe. Um, uh, so I think it will be not like typical grappler uh, striker fighter fight yeah. because uh, I I do want to strike with him. I do want to uh, try to. Uh, develop my striking skills too and like show what I can do uh, I so uh, let's see the fight will show I don't I don't like to plan too much because when you plan and when you have like this once one thing in your head and you go to the fight and if that's not going to happen then it's hard to adjust during the fight right. so I prefer to just know the weaknesses and I know the what should I uh, which way my fight has to go but then Whatever fight will bring it to me, I'm going to do that. So I think it's pretty even fight. And he's like, a very, I mean, he's experienced. And I do believe it will be very hard and interesting fight. So very, I, I'm prepared for it. And I, I, I think he will be too. Fight fans are excited for this too. There's no doubt about it. Now, Steele has never finished an opponent before, winning all six of his bouts by way of decisions. What does that say to you about his fighting style, if anything? Um, the thing is, uh, I think this is because of his fight style. He likes to just 
tag tag people. It's like karate karate background probably, and uh, I I I suppose he's working on that to change it because he does have a good speed. He does have a good distance control, sure. good reach advantage, uh, height advantage. Uh, but I mean. I do believe it's like more stylistical issue because he can't finish the fighters because he just likes to tag people. He doesn't like to like clash and disengage. I mean, engage during the fight. So that get that could be one of the reasons why he doesn't have the finishes. Great breakdown, Zaviat. The LFA bantamweight title really has a storied history. Leandro Higo was the first one to win it at LFA one. He moved on to Bellator and fought for a title there. The three other champions, Ricky Simone, uh, Miles Johns, and Casey Kenny, all have moved on to the UFC. So what would it mean to you to become the next LFA Bantamweight champion? Um, it's, of course, a big honor, to, big honor to be a champion of LFA because, in my opinion, LFA is one of the biggest organizations after this uh, – top uh, top organizations and uh, this is uh, a uh, this is a big opportunity for me and I think it's a big opportunity for Ricky too it's like for both of us it's kind of like ticket to the UFC if we win get this win um, no doubt that we're gonna get in the UFC and we're gonna get the contract so um, this is very important fight for both of us and I'm not I'm not gonna back down uh, I'm ready to kill for this title so <laughs> I'll be there and do whatever is necessary to get my win so bottom line when it comes down to it why will you be the one getting your hand raised next week at LFA number 90 um you know what uh, I I believe that um, the, the MMA especially is type of uh, sport where you can never say 100% that you're going to win or something. It's like very unpredictable sport. And uh, I believe you can do everything what's in your power, but there should be something else from above <laughs> to have that, that how to say, that blessing to be a champion and to be a world champion. So fight will decide. And let's see, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll, I'll, I'll go and try whatever I can, uh, and then result doesn't matter. Um, for me, it doesn't matter. I, of course, I want to win. I will do everything to get this win, but but you never know. You may lose too, right? So this sure. is life. This is game. So who am I? The Olympic champions and like really like elite athletes have lost, and I I don't I, I I see I don't see that I'm like some special guy who has to win or something. No, it's a fight. It's a war. So whoever implements their game plan, whoever implements their skills better than another, he will win. That's it. Simple as that. A lot on the line. That is very true. A great breakdown of both undefeated and someone's oh will have to go next week. Exactly. Viet Lavishlili, thank you so much time for the for uh doing this interview. We'll see you next week in South Dakota. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a great honor. Take care. You bet. Bye.